Well, welcome everybody to uh, the first of our series of interims uh, after I IETF 108. This is, just to clarify, this is the COSY working group, not DRIP, not ACE, not CORE. Um, this is still a, a, uh, an interim, so we do have a note well, um, as, as we would for other IETF meetings. Um, so please, please, uh, Please uh, take that into account. Um, for administrative stuff, so we have blue sheets. We put a special section in the minutes. If you could um, add your name there, we'll make sure that we um, we include that in the um, in the meeting materials after the session. Um, we did not arrange for any um, scribing or note taking ahead of time. Um, it, at least taking a glance at the Jabber room, it's a subset of everybody in the meeting, so I don't know if there's value in the Jabber. Um, is anybody willing to help with um, notes? The biggest thing we're concerned about is um, is action items. Thank you, Francesca, again. <laughs> okay. Uh, and um, so for the agenda that we had put up, um, it's really to talk about, uh, we're gonna do a very quick recap on where we're at with um, the existing counter signatures. And then Jim will walk us through both the documents and what the, uh, and a little bit on the counter signature proposal. And then um, we'll go over a wrap up um, for this session. Um, is there any changes desired to this agenda? All right, I'll take that as no. So for a recap really quick, um, so what we have today for counter signatures is we protect a couple of things, um, um, which works out fine for a couple of our structures, but doesn't actually do a counter signature for most of them. What we really want is something that does act as a counter signature uh, rather than a parallel signature is what we've got today. Um, so there's, Jim has pushed out an email going over uh, one possible approach um, that we can go into some more depth. Um, but also to recap from our last meeting, and we had at least mentioned this, put this on the list, is we definitely want to fix the problem. Um, there was a strong consensus to, to deprecate the old one and to find a new algorithm um, and to be as inclusive as possible, um, which was at least from uh, the, the, the sign, there was better support for that, but it was still uh, kind of weak virtually. Um, I think what we're going to next talk about, um, well, before I move on, is are there any questions on this so far? Okay, um, so we will now switch to Jim. Let me know when we want to change. Right. So uh, choose your own adventure. That this is this is a, a story format that, that appeared in the 70s that may or may not have made it out of the US. Uh, next slide. So the first decision that we really need to make is are we doing one document or multiple documents? I've pushed up a one document version that has the new the proposed new V2 counter signature proposal in it. So what's up there is is kind of what I would envision a one document version to look like. Um, arguments for doing one document is, is having a single document means you find everything. Um, but the time to get to full standard is going to be potentially substantially slower. I don't know what we consider to be a little bit slower. I mean, in some respects, 18 months in the IETF is, is not very long. 
um, which is what I'm guessing is is the sort of time delay we're looking at to get to full standard. Um, if we have multiple documents, then the base document can move forward much earlier. It's going to be easier to focus on the question of counter signature support in terms of moving just a separate counter signature document to full standard. Um, I'm a little bit worried about what level of interop we're going to have if we're saying what we want to do is future proofing because it's kind of hard to test the algorithm which is future proofing without ha without producing a future document or a future cozy structure to actually to run the tests on um, and even if we do one doc document we can still basically do a single std number so I went back and actually re-listened to the, to the last IETF meeting. Um, from the people who, just, who, who expressed opinions, most of them seem to be in favor of doing a single document. Um, I am weakly in favor of doing separate documents. So I guess the first question is, do people want to express opinions about what we should, how we should do this? And one of the questions is, do we, do, is, is the default a single document if we don't get, if we can't make a decision? I have a question. Yeah. You, you said 18 months. Is that a reasonable guess? of what delay would be um, if we went with one document? Um, I think so. If we go with one document, we're going to have to pull the structure document back into the working group. My guess is, is we won't be ready to, is we won't be ready to do a working group last call before the middle to end of October. We do that, then we go to the our, we go to the AD, then we do an I an IETF wide last call, then we do a go through the IESG. At that point, I think we're looking at March in order to get into the RFC editor queue. Um, after that, we're looking at probably at at I believe that the, 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 it's currently six months to get out of the RFC editor queue, but that is, is should be decreasing at at this point because they've gotten through most of the big backlog. Um, so we're basically looking at a new RFC comes out of proposed standard next July. Um, and then it's six months to a year after that before we can move the document to, to full standard. Okay. I I don't have a strong opinion. Uh, obviously, yes. Go ahead, Jim. I thought that some of the eighteen month was because if we have a uh, a year, um, to where we have to before we can uh, advance. Yes, that is correct. Okay, so so it's not that, all. That's, that's the period. For, that's the period from July twenty twenty one to July twenty twenty two. Right. So that that's that that's because we've added or changed things. If we don't, if we only subtract things, then we can count our previous experience. Yes. If we, if we only subtract things, we can be in the RSC editor queue by the end of September. Yeah. And and that would be and that and that document go to full standard immediately. Any other any other opinions or questions from anybody? Okay. 
Um, well, speaking for myself, this is Matthew Miller. I I also have a preference for um, for two documents. Um, again, partly because we we know what the shape of what we've got minus the counter signatures, um, and I think uh, it would be I think it would be beneficial for us to take to take the the time on that without pausing everything else. Would you then have um, a reference to this new document in uh, struct document? No, it, I would, would not want a normative reference. No, not a normative, because that would slow things down, obviously. But um, because yeah, see, some people were saying that they 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 like, I, and I agree with that. That it's good to have. Uh, to be able to find that document from the existing COSI one. Uh, yeah, I mean, part of what would be in the the pared down document would be a description of why we removed the counter signature and an informative reference to the new counter signature document. Okay, yeah, so there would be a, a reference to that. Yeah, I don't think that's a problem for going to full standard. And, and I, I saw in the mailing list there was some, um, one possibility was to keep the counter signature and then have a counter signature too. Ah, well Is that, has that been, uh, yeah. That, that that's the next slide. <laughs> okay. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> no problems. So I'm not I've, I'm not hearing a strong preference either direction. Neither am I. Um... So do we know who would be affected by this change? Because Offscore and Group Offscore is not affected. I checked ad hoc and it's not affected because they don't use counter signature with cosy sign and uh, Mac, if I'm not wrong. Well, counter or Oscore, Group Offscore would be affected only in that it would end up having to point to the STD doc. It, it would end up having to keep the pointer right now to 8152 for what is doing for, well, either that or point to the new counter signature document for its counter signatures. So it would basically have to make two okay. cozy references. Yes. But we also expect this to be done probably before the O score. I mean that that's not a problem. Yeah, I expect I expect that, that we should be able to get this new document out of the working group towards the end of the year. So we should, then, we should still be able to reference it. Yeah. And then what would be the plan? And, uh, so that would be proposed standard and then do the whole process again, or? Well, just do the whole process on that one document. On one document. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we basically at, at some point in the future would say, yes, we have implementation experience on the countersign document and then go through and, and push it to full standard and it would end up with the same standard number. So the, the, the standard XXX would have two documents in that. I, I think that most people have a strong opinion because as long as you can find this uh, counter signature new uh, new counter signature from the current document, it 
doesn't really matter where it is, as long as you can find it. Of course, if if you don't reference it, or then it then it's a different story. But okay, chairs. How do we go about wording a, a request to the mail list for what we do? Um, so I think what we we'll want, since since there really is nothing here, uh, there's no there's no consensus here, and there's at least of those that have commented on the list, there's no consensus there. Um, I think what we'd want to do is phrase a couple of um, questions. Oh, uh, Jonathan, you have a question? Yeah. Uh, yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, uh, just to clarify, um, so if you're going to go to multiple documents, that would be removing section five from the current draft. Is that right? The version two counter signatures, or am I wrong on that? The version one and version two counter signatures would both be removed. Okay, thank you for the clarification. And, and that's referencing the latest. Um, the latest struct draft that Jim uh, published on Monday, correct? <clears throat> yeah, I mean, compared to 8152, it would, be, it would be removing that section. It would effectively be removing that section from 8152. Um, so I think what we can do for chairs is we can we can work on a we can work on a question or a set of quest a couple of questions. Um, just looking for strong objections. From there, um, I think the question to, uh, I mean, if nobody else, then to the, the document author is, um, I mean, you're the author, we're, we're, we're leaving a little bit of the trust on structuring here, up to you if we don't get a clear signal. Um, you, Jim, had indicated a slight preference for two documents. Would that be an okay, Better state then to you, or uh, default state? That would be a, an acceptable default state. Okay. So we'll we'll make sure we make that clear in a statement to the working group. Um, but we'll be asking whether, and we'll be laying out these arguments here. Um, and I think what'll be more important is that we'll need to do some uncharacteristic stick prodding of the working group to try to get some some responses. I'd also like to see a reasonably fast deadline on the question. Sure. Um, my thinking, my personal thinking right now is is give give people a week. Yeah, I mean, if, could... if if we have the answer by Labor Day, I'm happy. I think okay. that's right. Winston. Yes, uh, um, I think that Jim should pick a preference, and uh, then we should ask for objections to that that uh, that direction. I don't think it's useful to ask the working group again. What do they prefer? Okay, that's fair. Um, I think Jim's already made it. I think Jim's made it clear that his preference is for two. Um, we could certainly ask that way and see about um, requiring, like, if anybody has objections, please, please speak now or accept the fate. <laughs> All right. Um, given that, Jim, should we move to slide five? I think so, yeah. Okay. So the next question is, what do we want to do with countersign version one? Um, do do we put it as main text in the new document? Do we put it as appendix in the new document, or do we just leave it behind in eighty one fifty two because it's deprecated and say it's deprecated? I have a. I have a preference to do the last one, 
because I think it makes more sense not to continue to document just just to document basically what we're what we're doing and to say if you want to know what the old one did you can go look there. Jim, did Barry say during the meeting that doing so would um, stop it from going to Internet Standard? Stop the adding document new, from progressing? Adding new stuff stops it from going to Internet Standard, full, full standard. Okay. Subtracting stuff is always legal. Okay. We tried X, it didn't work. We're not standardizing it. And and what we're talking about here is a new countersign document, not the not not the, the structure document. The The document, the document we're talking about on this slide is the new document to be written that says this is how you do counter signatures in COSI. Yeah. Okay. That's going to document the version two counter signature. The question is, does it document the version one counter signature as well and explicitly say is deprecated? Or do we just say it is deprecated and if you want the details, go look at 8152? That, that would be my preference to leave behind option three. But then again, we don't use it. So I think people who have implemented it and use it uh, would would have more uh, more weight on this decision. Well, the number of people who have implemented it and, and use it and are going to end up carrying should be relatively small. So my understanding is that. Uh, uh, the option you uh, seem to prefer is uh, to, I mean, do we still this the a small comment in the uh, 8152 this document and say that we deprecated it because of this and that and go read to the uh, 84, 8152 document, or we just subtract completely this section and have that uh, reference only in the new uh, document that will be written. Both documents are going to refer to the old counter signature and say it's that is say it's deprecated. Okay, that sounds good to me, speaking as individual. Um, this is Matthew Miller again, uh, speaking for myself. I, I think I said as, I think I, I said this on the list myself. I would prefer at most what we do is we say it's deprecated and here are the reasons why and go look at RFC 8152 if you really still want to implement that version. Okay, so in, in among the people who have spoken so far, I don't know that Michael's spoken yet. I'm hearing that, that that leaving it behind is the preferred answer. That is what I'm hearing. This, this is Jonathan. I also agree with leaving it behind. Uh, 
Okay, so that's question two to go into the chair's mail. Um, with the default again being leave it behind. Sure. I, th I think what we'll, what we'll do is similar to the other one. Um, we will phrase this as there, there was consensus in the meeting to leave it behind. If there are any stern objections, speak them now and we'll give it another. Um, I think this one we can also give another um, one week deadline. Right. Okay, slide four. What was slide four? There we go. So, okay, never mind. I think it's in the slide. Go ahead, Jim. So the next question is, we've defined structure names. And the structure of a counter signature in terms of what the CDDL looks like does not change whether it's a V1 or a V2 counter signature. But do we want to produce a new name so that people who refer to the CDDL is obvious which one they, they, they want to pick up? I would say yes, new name. Okay. Um, Currently in the document, there's a standalone tag, Seaboard tag, which is being defined for the V1. I don't see any reason to define a standalone tag for V1. We should just define it for V2. Um, and I don't know if there's anybody. I think that I think that's an uncontroversial statement. Yep. Um, if some community from the uh, AV, uh, um, the the Rabbit uh, Automotive Society turns out to have been using the old code and really needs a, a a tag, they could just ask for one. I think is correct. Well. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, speaking for myself, I agree. I don't think. Uh, provisioning one now is worthwhile. Okay, is anyone aware of any reasons why we would want to have the same name uh, for this structure? Or, uh, so far, I'm hearing that we want to have different names and have only the tag for. Uh, the version. But if people do implement the deprecated version, uh, that's less. That's less of a problem, obviously. Yeah, I mean, it's it's mostly a documentation question at this point because. At least in the base document, we don't actually have a real CDDL because we we don't use CDDL. Um, certainly, we could reference CDDL in the new one and and define an entire module. But it's I think it's six and one and a half dozen of the other because I don't expect people to be referencing. I don't expect people to be referencing the, the, the counter sign thing without having the tag. But I don't know that that's true. I need to check what structure looks like real quick. It looks exactly like a cozy signature. And point of fact is defined as Cozy counter signature is equal to cozy signature. Okay, so we're also giving a new label then. The question, yeah, do we basically define it? 8152 actually didn't define a label. 
hand signature, uh -huh. I don't think. I'd have to actually go look. That that's what I was wondering. I thought it did. Um Yeah, there is a, there's a counter signature text string, context string, it's called. I always forget. Well, there's a context string, but there's not a CDDL. Um, okay. no. But I was wondering about this context string. Uh, the context string will be different. Okay. Okay. Sorry. That, that I care about. The context string will be different if we add, well, okay. I'll go, I'll go in that in the next presentation. It's easier to talk about there. Okay, okay. Okay, I don't think either of these issues need to go to the list. Um, I think that this is, we can basically just have author's discretion and people can complain that they don't like it. I I absolutely agree with that. If this is only about the name, I don't care which one it is, really, because the counter signature doesn't have a CTDL right now, so it's not that confusing. So whatever you choose, Jim is is fine. Okay. So let's go ahead and jump to the counter signature algorithm. Right. Next slide. So, what I put in and proposed is basically the the last line in the counter signature in, on on the right side. So we add basically add an array containing all of the additional b binary strings that we want to include in the counter signature. Um, the context string is currently defined as its counter sign if that field is absent and counter sign V2 if that field is present. That means that the code for Oscor group com does not change in it does not change in any way. Um, you'll also notice that I put in the, the 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 tag on additional line three, and the algorithm is is going to be defined as to say we don't pick it pick it up if it's if it's a tagged beaster. We only pick it up if it's a beaster. So does anybody object to using the array at that point as opposed to just adding them one by one? And that would be in the the SIG structure, right? When you, what, the, what is on this right hand side? The right hand the side structure. is the, the right hand side is the to be signed structure. Okay, yeah. No, oh, sounds good. Jim, can you tell us uh, what is the advantage of having the, array here maybe that will also help um well there's two advantages to having the array uh the first is it makes my code easier which is neither here nor there the second is i wanted to is i put the array in there so that there was no no possible question about the number of B strings that are in the 
and the to be signed data. I didn't want to have a potential issue where additional line one, if additional line one is present, but protected attributes of the counter signature is not present, that you could potentially produce the same to be signed string. Putting the array in there makes it very explicit that that's not possible. Okay, thank you. Okay, for now, I'm just going to continue with this particular structure. If people object on the list, they can object on the list. Agreed. I was, I was about to say that. I mean, I think we can, when you have an initial version, they, they can start objecting. Right. Uh, so the next, next slide. This is a more interesting question, which is, do we want to define that the tag, which says ignore ignore this field in the cozy signature. Um, this is kind of a different tag than what is you currently used in CBOR because this tag is basically a, an ignore me when you're doing processing into a data model, but I need to be there for potential application processing. So it's, it's a tag, which is it's the only tag that I know of, which basically says, I'm not saying anything about what is what, what, what the data is, which is tagged. It's a little bit different in terms of what it is. Um, if we define the tag, then we have the full algorithm, but it also means that in order to go to full standard, we may want to decide, say that we need two implementations that implement the tag behavior. And we don't have any co in any base cozy structures that we could define that behavior to. So we'd have to make up one for the purposes of testing. So is the purpose says essentially this this data is mutable? Is that the this, point? Right. This data is mutable. And we don't actually have any examples where we need that yet, but we want to future proof ourselves in this. Okay. Precisely. I think if we define this tag um, and we have counter signature unit users, I think they will go, oh, that's interesting. Um, I, it may be that this is a, an anti pattern in design to have to require it. Um, and maybe no one will use it. And when we try to go to standard, we'll de deprecate it. That's always possible. And then maybe after at some point in the future, we'll find out that oops, we really do want it. Yeah. It might also be possible to not not uh, like register it, but that just give an intuition that this is possible. Um, and if someone needs it at some point, you know, they still can get the, oh, this is interesting and uh, want to register it later if they need it. Yes, um, and, and I'm kind of going back and forth between doing the registration or just, or not doing the registration, but describe how it would work. Mm -hmm. I don't have a strong opinion either way. Um, I mean, if if it was needed already, then the choice will be simple. It's not. I mean, Carson says tags are cheap, so it's, it's easy enough to get it. What, it depends what, what, it... what range, right? Well, that's the other question is, is what range do we want this in? What would it mean if this tag was on uh, something that was actually required? I, I, yeah, I guess it only applies to B string, but it's just thinking like if it was on a, another structure like the original signature. 
Uh, that would be not legal. If it was on the original signature, it would not be a legal signature structure. It, it just seems to add a bunch of edge cases. Yes, it adds a bunch of edge cases that we don't know how to deal that we don't have any reason to deal with yet. I will agree with that. So Matthew Miller speaking for myself, I am thinking about this. I really struggle with the use case here. Um, I don't have enough experience with SMIME and CMS to know how valuable something like that might have been then. It has never come up with Jose. I question how valuable this is. Okay. I I mean, my, 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 my personal feelings here is we've already got a number of points where additional values can be placed and understood semantics as far as how they apply to the, um, to the protection of, of this envelope. So, I, I mean, having space for other things to show up to me seems, um, rife for problems. Not having it will also make it easier to progress. I mean, it does have the side effect that we're now expecting these structures to effectively, you know, they're they're effectively set in stone. But I don't think that's a problem. I, no, I, I think we would define new structures if they weren't set. If 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 we needed to make changes, right? I mean, I know my code is is very explicit about going through and saying. This is exactly what it must look like. And if it doesn't look like that, I'm going to throw it out. Okay. So I think what I've heard here is basically a non normative descriptive process paragraph about this is one way to solve the problem is the correct way to go. If it comes up, yeah. I think that sounds correct. Or maybe it's actually, this is how we think we would solve the problem and you can deal with it. We can actually deal with it at the time it shows up. I personally prefer that. Any other comments from the from those present? Okay, that's everything I have. Okay. Yeah, and that was basically everything um, the chairs had. I mean, for wrap up, um, for the for the wrap up of this meeting, um, one question is if there's still value for another meeting. I think that comes down to Jim. If um, if two weeks is enough time for you to have um, document changes or do, uh, you know initial documents. Um, yeah, I mean the, the the changes for the structure document is is actually relatively simple, and and the new counter signature document is a based operation. Okay. Um, so I think the, the, the thing I would, the thing that I would like to try to get nailed down in the next meeting is bins discuss. Got it. Okay. Which of his discusses on the struct document or on the struct document? Okay. Um, he has a discuss, which basically says, I don't know if we have enough knowledge about message recovery, signature algorithms 
to, to have the description of them in the document. Okay. Um, all right, no, that seems reasonable and we chairs will try to uh, cajole Ben into attending the next one. If we, uh, if we can. Okay. Um, and then to recap, we have the working group chairs will have a couple of questions. We will send this as one, um, one email to list. I think that's reasonable, but we have the, um, from the meeting, there is rough consensus to have a single, to have two documents, uh, RFC 8152 BIS struct, um, and a new document for the, the V2 counter signatures. Are there any objections? Um, and then the second question is, um, with a two document structure, uh, we are, the, there, there is some rough consensus to leave, actually this is a little bit, slight, at least for the meeting, it's slightly better than rough. Um, leave V1 behind in 8152. And any discussion of V1 is that it is deprecated and go see the original document for the implementation. Are there any objections? And we will have this out. Um, I'll chat with Evo and I will chat after this, but I think we can have this out um, by the end of my day today in the US um, with a deadline of one week. Right. Um, we still have 10 minutes left. Is there anything else we want to try to discuss now or give everybody, everybody back 10 minutes? Do you want to talk about charter? Um, those that have asked about charter the most are not present in this meeting, so I'd prefer not to. Okay. I think we'll make meeting. it. Go Next ahead. meeting is the 9th. Yes, September 9th, same time. And we currently have one more meeting scheduled. We can either cancel that or we can use that to, um, to nail down rechartering. So, um, that sound all right to everybody present? Yep. Yes. All right. Okay. All right. Well, uh, thank you everybody for for attending. We um, we will get these questions out to the list as soon as we can. We'll get the minutes put up, um, and once we have the recording, we'll make sure we'll link that too. Um, if there's nothing else. Um, Please, before departing, double check that your name is listed. Um, it looks like it to me, so I think we're good. Um, thank you, everybody. We'll uh, chat on the list and in two weeks. Yeah, thanks. Bye. -bye. Bye.